I'll pick up where I left off last. You can see on my screen the which Neo Vim command I ran is showing me I last was using the Primagen's starter kit. Now I will switch over to my environment that I use. This is also built with Packer. This is the first installation that I ever did when I converted from the plug package manager and Vim to NeoVim. You can see my installation is done pretty quickly, including about 17 languages just to do it to see how the system actually works when the language servers are done. Status is with Packer right now. I've got 87 plugins loaded, which is what I expected. Startup time. So this is a, a different style of startup than what Lazy is using, but it will give me an idea of what my overall startup time is. So I'm around that 19.73 millisecond startup time file that I use to configure NeoVim. What I did or what I chose to do when I built this configuration to start with, I wanted to list all my plugins in a particular order so I could control the actual startup process. Notice during the startup, we're going to get information on the screen showing us that the Lua language server was, was actually in, in fact loaded. So if we do an LSP info, we're going to see that I've got some buffers attached. So I've been experimenting with the diagnostics, uh, Lua, the language specific um, language protocol server, as well as null LS. So I do have three set up. It's not necessary. You may not want three. It's just some experiments that I'm running to see how they work. So one of the things that I did with this configuration is you notice that I loaded, listed my files in this particular in the init file in the order that I wanted them processed. What that allowed me to do as I was first getting started, it just allowed me to go in and grab a quick block, comment it out, and just this was kind of a very easy way to um, configure the system. Now the downside to doing this is you do have to do the Packer sync again and you do have to clean. So that's okay. So if I wanted to run it this way, I would just you know rip, save the file out and I'm going to see that it's going to resync and I'm not going to have as many plugins loaded. Um, but that's okay. That's basically what I was doing. So you notice at this point my environment looks a little bit different. The colors are a little bit different. But that's what I wanted. So I don't have Nerd Tree as an example. That's not, not available to me. So I would go back and just turn it back on. And then I would just I would just comment that block, uncomment that block, and then just get out. Fine with grep. And we're gonna look for the keyword YouTube. And what we're gonna see is I got a quick hit um, that found all the changes that I wanted to go over in this video that I made specifically to, to kind of discuss what I'm doing um, with my environment. So the first one we're gonna take a look at is telescope. So you notice I am using telescope uh, and, and I've got the configuration. So the prompt is on the top and then the, the preview is on the right. So if I just select that particular file, it takes me right into my environment. You notice on the lower right hand corner, the diagnostics was ran, fidget information was being displayed. And this particular video, uh, this particular plugin does not get used during the installation process. So if we continue looking for the string YouTube in this file, um, what we're also going to see is I've told, I'm telling Telescope to ignore a bunch of files when I'm doing grep searches. In particular, I don't want to try to look through executables or PDF files or, or things like that. So this is a pretty long list, but I also do not want to look at my spelling. So there's no reason for me to look in my spelling dictionary for the word YouTube. I know it's in there, but I'm looking when I'm doing my live greps, I'm really only looking for code. Um, one of the things I wanted to, that confused me at first with the configuration of um, telescope was these border characters. So if I bring up a find file really quick, you'll notice that I have a nice border. I mean, I have a nice pop-up, but the borders aren't present. And that really confused me because I can see clearly I've defined those characters. 
it took me a little bit of troubleshooting to figure out what's going on and so I wanted to share that with everybody to hopefully save you from doing the, the having to go through the same experience I did. These values that are in uh, Border Cares are actually being overwritten or set to the same color as the color scheme I'm using. The color scheme I'm using right now is a, uh, from the Base 16 package. It's Tokyo Night Terminal Dark. And that does things with the, uh, with the telescope borders and it surprised me. So I spent a lot of time thinking I had configured telescope incorrectly or I had done some other things wrong and then I discovered it was really the color scheme I was using. So I wanna show you that in, in just a minute. Now the other thing that you notice is in the overall telescope setup itself, I've just got two lines of code. And the reason I did that is I wanted to um, be able to find things really quickly as I was studying telescope but then I wanted to use local variables. It was just a preference on my part. So I could go into this particular file and if I was dealing with ignore file characters, I just wanted to create a, a tape, a, a string array with that information in it and then use that later on. So if we look at the local defaults, then you'll see a bunch of information coming together to configure telescope in a way that makes sense to me. Fine with grep and we're gonna go back to YouTube and we're going to start by looking at some of the auto command file. We've already taken care of the telescope file, but I want to look at the auto commands first, and then we'll do the, the color schemes last. So in the auto commands, there's a couple things that, that were worth mentioning in here. Um, I found when I was doing my conversion from Packer to LazyVim, I noticed that they had a really nice auto command in the configuration that quits a window with the Q key. So for example, I use fugitive. So if I do a leader GS, then I get a fugitive window that comes up. And if I do a Q, it simply closes. So this particular auto command I found was really nice to use. So I added it to my configuration. The next one on the list would be um, this auto command create where the terminal closes, it checks to see if the file has been reloaded. So if I've changed the file, you'll, I'll get a nice little message telling me the file's been changed. Do I want to reload it? So I found that also when I was converting my Packer environment to lazy. The next one down was, was uh, one that I really like because I automatically resizes my windows. So I tend to use a lot of splits. Uh, in particular, I'll do a lot of vertical splits and I may, may do a fine file and do keystroke or key bindings. Uh, I may do another vertical split and I may look for README. Now I've got a bunch of stuff going on on my, my screen. Doing this sometimes when I need to look at multiple pieces of documentation or code and I just want to look and focus at the code itself and not have to continuously move around because I might be studying something and I need to think about what I'm seeing and look at multiple pieces of information at the same time. What, what makes this really nice is I'm using a tiling window manager. So if you just noticed what I did was when I did a, I, I launched another terminal and when a, the Alacrity terminal came up, it automatically tiled on the right of my screen. But notice what happened to the left side of my desktop. The NeoVim environment automatically resized. That's because of that auto command. So if I get out of the other Alacrity terminal, we're gonna see immediately that NeoVim resizes. And as you would expect, that auto command is gonna cause each one of the windows as they go away it's going to make it automatically resize. So I thought that was really cool. I added it into my environment because I liked it so much. My customization file, and that will lead us to the color scheme changes. So if we look at the color schemes, we're gonna see that I've got in my customization flag, I've got this experiment that I'm running. And right now I'm using the base 16 flag I realized both flags are true, but only one flag is going to take effect, which was the first hit, and I'll explain what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna turn off relative line numbers. So if you notice on line uh, eight, I, my base 
color scheme is Bay 16 Tokyo Night Terminal Storm. That is the one that's currently active. If I set the flag to false and I leave the folk flag to true, then I'll use Folky's Tokyo Night Storm color scheme. And there's a slight difference in these color schemes. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that to you right now. Go back to my get out of NeoVim altogether. When we go right back into NeoVim, we'll run the same command again. We'll do the find with grep. And notice the colors are slightly different, but notice those borders showed up. Everything else in Telescope is just the way it was. So I spent a lot of time trying to understand where did my borders go? What happened to my borders? It turned out that was all in the color scheme that I happened to be using at that particular time. I hope that helps you so you don't go down that same path I had to have figured out did I mess up my telescope configuration? Well, in fact, I didn't. It was really what the color scheme itself was doing. So as I, as I navigate down the lines, you're gonna notice that the current line number is a different color than the lines above and the lines below. I'm doing that with these three commands right here. Now, now I will demonstrate how I review my code changes that I've made. So notice my prompt includes the name of the branch I'm working on as well as a plus one. That's the indicator that I have made a code change. The alias that I've shown ng means run NeoVim with the capital G command, which is a fugitive specific command, which shows me the status. So when I launch NeoVim that way, I immediately go into a fugitive split and I can navigate down to that line and I can do a diff on it and see the code change that I made. In this particular case, I changed base 16 from a true to a false. I don't want that code change, so I simply navigate back to the fugitive window. I do an X key, or a capital X in my case, and that deletes that change. I, I simply get out of NeoVim altogether, and notice my prompt is already back to a check mark, meaning I have no cha code changes. When I go back into NeoVim, I expect to see the other color scheme active, which I'm going to verify that by doing a find file. And I want to look at I want to look at my auto commands for so there it is and the telescope looked exactly the way I expected it to look. So in my auto commands file, notice that I have I'm doing relative line numbers right now. Notice that the line number as I move up and down, the current line number is changing to the color that you see on line nine. So the colorizer package. I'm using also helps me understand the actual color choices that I'm making. And if the line below and the line above are the same because I do not want that visual distraction. So if you noticed in the lower right hand corner of my screen, I was loading different uh, language servers. So if we go in and do uh, the LSP info, we should see that I've got three buffers attached. There's the diagnostics, there's the Lua LS and the No LS. So we'll get out of this. When I switch between relative and just numbers, the color that takes effect is the line number color. Finally, it's time for that rust experiment that I know you've been waiting for. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look for my cargo command in here. And by the way, this is FCF command line um, that I'm using. The command that I'm gonna run is I'm gonna clear the screen, I'm gonna remove the sample directory, I'll do a cargo new sample, I'll CD into that directory, and we'll just run a tree command all at the same time. Right into NeoVim, and we'll do a find file, and we can see that the cargo package, the TOML file is there, that's expected. If we navigate, we see the friendly hello world program. Now what we're expecting to see happen is the Rust analyzer get loaded when I press the enter key. So let's go for this. So we see the Rust analyzer coming in. We see everything working. We'll wait for that to finish and we'll do the LSP info. Lo and behold, I got the same three. I have three clients attached to my buffer. The one that differs is instead of Lua LS, it's now the Rust LS. Same experiments we did with, with the other kits where we brought Rust in. I was able to demonstrate the ability to use different languages and have them attached to your uh, buffer as you're doing your work.
Now I'll go over a few key bindings that I've set up to make my personal environment a little, a little more productive for me. I'm going to go to my key bind files. I just type in the word key and I found the file right away. Because of the other, because of my auto commands, it jumped to the last place I was in the file. I really like when I want to read help at times, I just can do the leader HH and it brings up help in a split takes up the full window so I can navigate around and remember this is just another buffer so you can type and you can search for words in here as well and so you can you can toggle around and search and you, you're seeing I'm getting feedback telling you that the search has hit the bottom which is the way I've got my environment configured right now in the find section there's a couple of telescope commands that I found very useful so most of my find operations start with leader F so I would do leader F C and now I'm doing I'm asking Telescope to show me all the commands that I can look through. The man pages, so leader FM, we go right to the man pages, which I also, I use this quite a bit, so I can navigate through the, through the man page, find the one I'm after, read it more, jump into the file when I need to. I like to use this help task, so that's leader FH, so it brings up the help task tags, which, which again, is very useful. A telescope command that I use is associated with get. So all my get commands start with a leader G. So if I want to look at commits, it's leader G capital C, and I see all the commits that I've done so I can navigate around through the, through the commits with using the default leader uh, control P and control N. If I want to do branches, then it's leader G, B, and now I can see the branches, so I can bounce around between the branches. The last two keystrokes I'll go over with you is how I clean up my user interface. Recall that I like to use an explorer. So I happen to be in a file right now. It's my key bindings file. But let's say I don't remember where that file is in the tree I'm currently working on. So back to my nerd tree days, I would do something called nerd tree find. So in this particular case, I've got that bound to a keystroke where I can just do leader NF. It takes me right to that file and it selects that file in the tree view. So I know exactly where I am relative to the rest of the code base. If I navigate down the, the tree view window, window and I do a control V, it brings up another window. It automatically closed the tree view as well. If I bring the tree view back up with the leader in, back into my key bindings file, and I only want that to be the active window, I do leader OO, and that was just only one window. So uh, that was this command here that I just did. So obviously that can, that can be very useful for me. It allows me to clean up my user interface really quickly. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Remember, this is a seven-part video series where I'm covering different NeoVim installations. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. I've got a new microphone, so I'd like to get feedback on whether the audio quality is improving. Thanks again for watching. This is Strap. I'm out. May God bless you.